the sixth chapter in writing culture is written by Talal Assad and it is the most boring one so far because the bulk of it is an analysis of Ernest Gellner's text Concepts and Society from 1970. However, the chapter ends with Assad wrapping up some thoughts about uh, translation and cultural translation. I think his main point is that as anthropologists and ethnographers we must be aware of the power structures that guide our work and in mainly two ways. First of all, he has a theory of the inequality of languages, where he means that uh, certain languages are so developed and used for such a wide variety of uh, purposes, like philosophy, politics, law, etc. So that when, when you describe a culture in those languages, you, you risk to to, to express the culture that you are describing, to translate it into a very elaborate language. And when these texts seep back into the original culture where, which you described, they might affect these cultures. The other way that um, power structures might appear is uh, in the sense that the eth ethnographer seeks implicit meanings in the culture that they study. And he compares this to a psychoanalyst who works together with the patient. The patient would then be the culture that we go to. The psychoanalyst is educated in a way that the patient is not. So therefore the psychoanalyst helps the patient to see what the patient can't see themselves and uh, thereby come up with a theory of, um, yeah, to find patterns and meanings that the patient can't see. And likewise, the anthropologist might uh, do the same in the culture where they study. It's, of course, not a perfect analogy because um, the culture is not sick and has not sought out uh, an anthropologist to help them see things. It's rather the opposite, the, the anthropologist who wants to go there. But even so, I think that Assad's point is that we must be wary of this because otherwise we risk becoming this psychoanalyst. And, um, and he says that the person who assigns meaning to something in the end becomes the author of this culture. So, so the psychoanalyst becomes the author of the problems that he has described. And likewise, the anthropologist becomes the author of um, whatever they have found in, in the culture that they are researching. And this is a problem because they are not the author of this culture. They are the translator, maybe. And lots of, um, lots of the content in, in the last few pages of this chapter is also about uh, translation, it seems like he's negative to translation in general. And uh, at some point he suggests that, well, maybe a better way is to simply show the audience an original performance in the original language, in the original culture. Sure, but uh, I think that the audience will translate that themselves in that case, in their heads. Because translation always occurs. And the reason for that is that cultures are different. And I think that there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with translation. Translation is our will to understand another culture and our will to, or our attempt to relate that culture to our own lives. There's nothing wrong in that. It's quite beautiful, actually. And um, I think that between the lines here is a criticism of translation um, as a whole. Uh, and I, I, I don't agree with that. But of course, one should be wary of uh, power structures, of the what he calls the inequality of languages. Yeah, let's continue with uh, Mar George Marcus, who is uh, the other co-editor of this volume. <laughs> 